hello and welcome to my part three of my question and a series uh, thank you for coming on and watching uh, please do subscribe like my channel uh, like my Facebook and I'll be doing some more videos sorry this one's taken a little bit longer than expected to get up but part three here we go if you miss part one and two um, I'll put some banners up for them now do have a watch and a listen uh, first question, Sabrina Johnson, what would your advice be for first time cruisers? Um, first piece of advice is think about what cruise you're going to book. Uh, are you after a beach holiday? Are you after some culture? Do you want some amazing landscapes? Because uh, they're all different types of cruises and there are cruises out there for everyone. But uh, yeah, make sure you think about what type of cruise you book before you book it. Um, secondly, um, do you get seasick? Uh, if you do, it doesn't mean don't cruise, but uh, there are plenty of seasick medicines out there which do a great job. Uh, but what I would say is a couple of days before you go, if you, even if you don't know if you get seasick, seasickness tablets are innate. They don't cause you any harm unless you're allergic to them, which is very rare. Um, so I would, a couple of days before you go, start taking seasickness pills and then take them every day and then you'll be sweet, you won't get seasick. There's my pro advice for you. Oh, and fight when you're on board, socialise, go to events. Um, some people go on a cruise and they sit in their cabin and watch their TV. That is your right, it's your vacation, do what you like. But to me, that's odd. Don't, don't be one of those people. Um, Kiki D, uh, what's your biggest gripe about cruise passengers? Um, I don't really have one. Um, I, I genuinely love my job. I genuinely love meeting you guys. Uh, that's why I do what I do. Um, grab a, don't be late for stuff. There you go. Uh, people that are late back from port um, and stuff like that. That's always annoying. You know, you, Not that it annoys me. I'm on that boat for six months regardless. But... Uh, it's not very considerate of the other two and a half thousand guests that are on board uh, when you delay them. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, Jonathan Carter, while working on board, can you hook up with another crew member for a little action? Hashtag pound town, hashtag hit it. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, the crew uh, do uh, hook up with each other. Um, there are a lot of relationships on board. Um, it does happen. Um, I'm not sure about hashtag pound down, um, but people get bored and there, there is a lot of hooking up on, on board, various people. Not my cup of tea, um, once you know where too many people have been, no longer interests. <laughs> um, but yeah, a, a lot of the crew, and a lot of the crew make meaningful relationships on board. Um, you know, a lot of them, it's not just hookups, they have a relationship, and sometimes that's a relationship where they both know it's going to end when one of them leaves the ship, but for all intents and purposes, while they're on board, they are boyfriend and girlfriend until they leave. And some, they take it to their next ship and they try and stay together. Carnival do uh, keep couples together. Um, if you ask them to, they do their best to facilitate that. So, um, Sherry Carter, do Carnival provide dentists as orthodontist care for those with braces? Um, I don't have braces, so I'm not 100% sure. I believe dental care, unless it's emergency dental care, is an exception to our medical insurance. I have a broken tooth. Um, doesn't cause me any problems. Um, but if it did cause problems, I believe that I would be liable for getting that sorted. Um, I broke it doing fire poi. Um, before anyone asked that for my next Q&A. Uh, I can go into more detail if you want to know what happened, let me know. But yeah, so I believe dentists and orthodontists care, unless it's emergency care, um, isn't covered by our medical insurance. Though they do have people in port that they can recommend for you, that they know are safe, and they know, um, so they will help you with that. Karen Shields, what is your best experience so far and your worst experience so far? Um, my worst experience was probably back when I was a photographer on cruise ships, which was six, seven years ago now, a long time ago. Um, I got lost in Barcelona. Um, I was convinced I was heading towards the port, I was heading away from it. Um, very scary. Um, yeah, probably my worst experience. Um, closely second would be, um, as a crew member, we get cabin inspections. Um, 
like weekly we we can have security at any point just come into our cabin and inspect um i had it was a power strip that didn't meet regulations even though i've been told it had it does meet regulations um and they did a cabin inspection while i wasn't there and they took it didn't leave a note or anything um that can feel very invasive um, if you want to hear more about particularly what happened there, uh, it's in one of my vlogs. I'm not 100% sure which one. You'll have to watch them all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, check out my YouTube. Um, but yeah, there, there's some stuff you lose a certain amount of privacy being on a cruise ship. And I understand why they don't want cheap electrical items catching fire and killing everyone. You know, I'm 100% behind cabin inspections. But they could have left me a note. You know, maybe I should just get over it. Um, my best experience so far, probably New Year's. There's a video up um, of New Year's. Um, I think it's up anyway. I will upload it if it's not. Um, the New Year's countdown was amazing on the cruise ship. Um, absolutely fantastic. And in general, day-to-day -day experience, one, I love having access to live music, being able to go and watch the bands whenever I like. It's great. Um, and two, just meeting guests. I, I love meeting people. I love networking. That's one of the reasons I work in entertainment, um, but yeah, and I love it. And I've made many good friends uh, with guests, lots of them following this now, I expect. Um, hit like and say hi if you're one of those. Um, generally, if guests message me once I'm off the ship, I, I do try and respond. So feel free to drop me a message, guys. And if you've got any questions for a part four, I've only got three questions beyond this one so far, but if anyone does want a part four, ask some more questions and I'll do my best to answer them. So you go, best and worst uh, experience ever. Oh, I also learned to scuba dive. I'm now a qualified scuba diver. I did that while we were in dry dock. That was a pretty amazing experience. Uh, swimming with sharks, no cage. Pretty amazing. Um, Kim Castellaja. I got no idea how to pronounce your surname. I do apologise if I just slaughtered that. Um, if someone was to give calling cards to call home, uh, would that be something you could use? It would be something we could use. However, I suspect with most calling cards, you have to call a number on them, right? To um, and that effectively makes the long distance call a local rate. I think we'd have to use a carnival calling card to then call the number on your calling card so I don't think it would actually work out any cheaper um, I just use Skype personally um, so I can't give you a definitive answer with so I, I don't think it's something I would use because I generally like to video chat with people um, so I can see what's going on back home um, my sister has just had a baby um, so next time I will be keeping in touch via video uh, to see Bubba grow up uh, I'm now a proud uncle um, but um, yeah, so I'm not sure. In theory, I think on cards could work. However, I don't think it would work out very cost effective for the crew. Um, so I don't know whether it would end up actually being used. Hope that helps. Uh, Melinda White Moss, do you guys want the candy passengers leave you, or would you rather have money? I've covered this um, briefly in another um, Q and A. I think it was the second Q and A that I did. Um, Candy's great. Personally, for me, it's only worth it if it's candy you've brought from home and there's something more than just the cash value of the candy. I get, as a crew member, I get a discount in the candy store. So if you spend five bucks on candy to give to me, if you had just given me five dollars, I could then buy six dollars worth of candy. So <laughs> um, I like it when there's a meaning behind it. If it's just giving me something for its monetary value, uh, you might as well just give them the cash. Um, just my opinion. Some other people might love that, but that, my opinion, yeah. Um, and last question for this Q&A session, because we are running high on time, 10 minutes in already, pretty much. Uh, Kaylee Smith-Kaiser, is um, Woodcock really your last name? Yes. Um, Woodcock is my last name, it's not a stage name, um, it is a small Scottish bird, um, I got mighty bullied over it at school, um, along with plenty of other reasons, my size, my, my geeky nature, I'm, I'm a nerd through and through, um, but yes, 
uh, Woodcock is really my last name. Um, my last name is not from London, as lots of cruisers seem to think on their comments cards, Josh from London. Um, so this, uh, my name is Josh Woodcock. Um, Joshua is my full first name, obviously. Um, so there you go, there is Q&A section 3 guys, I hope you have enjoyed, um, do make sure you watch part 1 and 2 if you haven't already, please do like my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it lets me know that you are enjoying these videos and tells me to keep making them. Um, have a great day whatever you're doing, uh, keep cruising and hopefully I will see you on a carnival ship someday soon. Bye folks.